First of all, uh, good evening, Mr. President, counselors. It's a pleasure to appear before you tonight and present to you the fiscal year 2017 budget. Uh, I know, as the President just mentioned, we're going to spend at least three uh, long evenings uh, to enable you to conduct a comprehensive review of the budget. And we will have all of the department heads and myself uh, here at the appropriate times to answer your questions as best we possibly can. I thought it would help the process if I could, as we've done the past couple years, if I could take a few moments at the opening to just kind of preview for you, kind of give you a big picture, look at uh, what I feel some of the key points of the budget are, and then I will uh, remain up here to review specifically the mayor's office budget with you. As we look at uh, this year's budget, there are really some, uh, some key points I'd like to, to bring out. First of all, this budget increases local aid to education by $2.3 million. And part of the significance of that is in the governor's budget, the one we're working with right now, only increases Brockton's Chapter 70 local aid to education by $300,000. So in this budget, we are making a commitment of $2 million of local city funds to supplement and provide an additional $2 million increase in funding because the 300,000 proposed by the governor is just so insufficient. And without this additional $2 million of funding, I believe that there would have been <coughs> catastrophic cuts uh, in the delivery of services in the school budget. And we are, and I'll leave the review of the school budget to the superintendent a little later in the evening, uh, but we certainly are hoping that as the state completes its budget process that uh, there will be some additional aid forthcoming. And if it does materialize, we will work closely with the council and with the school committee to figure out how to best appropriate that money. Uh, by the way, this $2.3 million increase this year, this is our third budget of our administration, brings our three-year total to an $11.4 million a year increase in local aid to funding over the, the three budgets that I've prepared for you. This budget will also show a $2.2 million deposit to the stabilization fund, bringing the balance in the stabilization fund up to about $5.3 million or $3 million above where it was at this point last year. And I'll talk about that in some more detail, but we do feel it is critical to the city's financial future that we have to replenish that stabilization fund that has been depleted over the last couple of years, primarily with the council's approval, funding uh, the settling of city contracts. And we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit more. This budget also reduces the funding to the Brockton 21st Century Corporation by $50,000. I have been listening closely and carefully to a lot of the comments and concerns raised by counselors over the last few months. And in this budget, in essence, I am proposing to you a transition year so that we can work together to reconfigure and determine a new path for the city's economic development activities, including working together to bring the Campanelli Stadium Shaw's Center complex back under direct city control. And when we get into the budget, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that. And this budget also pays for a number of capital needs that are long overdue, repairs to roofs at fire stations that have been leaking for years, uh, replenishing and rebuilding the number of police cruisers, adding some much needed snow equipment, snow removal equipment to the DPW, and also retiring nearly a million dollars of the debt that we still owe from the historic winter of last year in fiscal year 15. And the key to that is those capital needs and the retiring of that debt will be done with cash and not with borrowing, further strengthening the city's financial position. And I think at the end of, of all of this, you will also agree that we are continuing to show restraint on incurring additional property taxes on our homeowners and business owners. 
and for the third consecutive year, this budget will not require or will not call for the full two and a half uh, increase in the tax levy. I will be recommending an increase in the levy, but not for the full two and a half. The effects of not using the full two and a half over the past three years has saved the taxpayers and business owners and homeowners of this city a total now of $8 million in potential property taxes that we have left on the table and kept in the taxpayers' pockets. So let me touch on those each just in a little bit more detail. In terms of the educational funding, as I mentioned, uh, and I'm sure you're well aware that the governor's proposed budget this year, Chapter 70 formula to education, uh, potentially really hurts the city of Brockton. It, we are dramatically underfunded. And I know the superintendent will discuss this with you in more detail, uh, but for a gateway city like Brockton, with uh, 17,500 students, with all the challenges that we face with our students, to be in essence almost level funded by the governor this year uh, is ridiculous. While you know our cost of doing business for the year go up by in the neighborhood of $10 million. Uh, so as I mentioned, we are going, we are putting in this budget an additional $2 million into local aid to education over and above the governor's proposed 300,000 increase in Chapter 70, and we'll hope that there's some additional aid coming in July uh, when the House and Senate and governor agree on a final budget. But we did this year, for the first time in many years, fully fund at 100% the city's obligation to educational funding. Our stabilization fund needs some money in it. Uh, and the reason for the dip in the balance in the stabilization fund over the past couple of years is, is very apparent. When I took office two and a half years ago, the city has 17 collective bargaining units from the unions, union collective bargaining units. 16 of the 17 collective bargaining units in the city were working without a contract and most have been working for several years without a contract. Today, and matter of fact, the only one that had an agreement was the firefighters union, but that had not been paid for yet. They'd agreed upon it, but we actually funded that during my first year in office. Today, two and a half years later, we have 16 out of the 17 unions working with a current collective bargaining agreement today. That means we've settled 17 contracts in the last two and a half years, and they almost all, if not all, required retroactive payments for pay raises and other benefits because of the fact union members had been working without a contract. And so it was the right thing to do, it was the necessary thing to do, but there's no doubt that the funding of those union contracts depleted the stabilization fund and the cost of those contracts with your approval uh, was paid out of the stabilization fund bringing the balance down to a low this past year of 2.3 million. We've made some additional deposits uh, with your approval during the year and with the additional 2.2 million in tonight's budget uh, will bring us up to $5.3 million in the stabilization fund, or a full $3 million above where that balance was exactly a year ago. Now, in order to fund, the money's got to come from somewhere. So in order to fund this $2.2 million contribution, let's see if I can get this just a little lower. Uh, in order to fund this $2.2 million appropriation into the stabilization fund, this budget does recommend utilizing 1.9% of the available 2.5% levy under Prop 2.5. The entire amount of revenue raised by that 1.9% increase is going directly into the stabilization fund. It's a painful but necessary step to maintain the city's finances. 
in essence, we have balanced the budget based upon the current tax levy, but I'm making the decision and the recommendation to you that we do need to utilize 1.9% to raise the funds necessary to replenish that stabilization fund. And I think it's critical for the city's financial stability, and it's also important as we go through our next round of review by the bond rating agencies that we be able to maintain our current high bond ratings. We've also had a commitment that's continued in this budget for public safety staffing. This FY17 budget increases police staffing to 195 officers. That is the highest staffing level of the Brockton Police Department in over 35 years. It also funds two new positions in the police department, two new civilian positions, a crime analyst, and that person has recently joined the city, and also a director of communications and community outreach. And I believe that as we look at community relations with police departments in cities across the country, that particularly in a city with the diversity of Brockton, that it's essential that we build a bridge of communication between the police department and the residents of the city. And that's what this job will do. That's what this individual, when selected, will do, is they will lead not just our communications, but they'll be the director of community outreach. This is a model that's been successfully used in many other cities. And in essence, this will build, this person will build a civilian bridge between the residents of the city and the officers who are sworn to protect them. This budget also maintains our firefighter staffing at 194. And the importance there is that 194 includes the 12 new firefighters that we just put on a couple of months ago, who just graduated from the academy and joined the ranks a couple of months ago. So compared to three years ago in our first budget, there is an increase in eight positions in the police department and an increase of seven positions in the fire department for a total net increase of 15 positions in public safety. <coughs> During extremely difficult and tough financial times, we are increasing our commitment to public safety. And some may ask me if we can afford to do that, and I will maintain to you, counselors, that we cannot afford not to do that. Also in this year's budget, you will also see a couple of other key positions added that I believe are critical to the city's future. One is a citywide grants coordinator. This is a position that's long overdue. Would have recommended it to you last year if we could have found the funding. Right now in the city of Brockton, as we face these tough financial times and these budgets aren't getting any easier, it's essential that we be tapping into and doing the most effective job we can in obtaining grant funding at every opportunity. And in today's world of grant funding, almost all grants require collaboration between multiple either city or private nonprofit agencies. Very few grants are just awarded to one entity anymore. And so we have all these different groups both inside and outside city government that are writing grant applications, being successful on some, bringing money in. But as an example, we have BayWIB writing grant applications. We have Brockton Area Transit seeking grant funding. We have two hospitals seeking grant funding. Not to mention our own police department, fire department, and school department who all write grant applications. But everyone in this grants world is operating within silos. And sometimes the left hand doesn't know what the right hand is doing. And we can be far more effective if we have an experienced grant writer who from above on the city's behalf will coordinate all of the grant writing efforts in the city. And there is no doubt that that position will pay for itself several times over in increased grant funding coming into the city of Brockton. Some of that directly into the city coffers and also going into other agencies that are doing good work that benefit the residents of the city and will help us to form more of those strategic collaborations that will result in successful rather than disappointing results on grant awards. There's also a proposed 
conservation agent slash planner in the planners department. And this is continuing our joint commitment to rebuild that planning office. Uh, we've made great strides over the past couple of years, but our staffing in our planning office is still not comparable to other cities the size of Brockton. We can see positive results coming from the investment we've made so far. And right now, a lot of this, um, the conservation agent portion of the job is being completed utilizing an outside consultant working with the board. We feel, the boards, we feel this will be a much better investment to bring some of that work in-house, have it done by the city itself within the planning office, and also this person will then be able to work on other planning activities along with providing more support to our citizen boards that rely on technical advice like conservation, planning, and ZBA. And finally, there's some funding in the veterans uh, office for not a permanent city employee, but to fund a part-time position contracted from the Veterans Administration to provide a veterans service officer. And this would only be a 20 hour a week part-time job contracted through the VA, but we need assistance in helping our veterans. We just don't have the staffing office currently in our veterans agent's office to do the kind of outreach that we're challenged with doing today. We have veterans facing challenges with housing, with employment, with mental health issues, with substance abuse issues, and we need someone representing the city's veterans agent doing outreach work, outreach work in the community. And when you review that veterans uh, agent's budget a little bit later this evening, uh, I know that Dave is prepared to provide you with a complete description of what the job duties would be of that part-time position. In terms of B21, as I said, I think I've heard the sentiment of the council loud and clear in terms of us coming to a decision that it's time to go in another direction with many of the activities that have been provided by Brockton 21st Century Corp. So you'll notice, first of all, right up front, I've reduced the funding by $50,000. I think there's a sentiment among the council to start moving away from the funding of B21 as it's been done in the past, and we're taking that initial first step with you. But beyond that, what I'd like to work with the council on is using a transition year to set the stage to go completely in another direction in terms of the economic development activities that are funded by the city, in terms of the oversight and the ownership of the stadium. And I think that we can take some halfway steps to do that in this year's budget and then work together over the next year to come up with those long-term solutions. It's not as simple as just say, take the stadium back from B21. We have to work together with the attorneys to figure out what is the best form of ownership for the city to take that stadium back under. Is it a stadium authority? Is it expanding the authority of one of the existing authorities? Is it bringing it back into parks and recreation? How are we going to own it, own it manage it, supervise it? That's not an overnight decision. We need a transition year to work on that together. But I am committed to working with you over the next year to bring that stadium complex back under city control. In the interim, the remainder of the funding that I have left in there, the $225,000, will have some conditions included in the contract that have not been included in the past. We will, first of all, and this part does not directly involve city funds, but just in the spirit of looking at the entire B21 operation, um, I have recommended that we move the Main Street manager out of B21. Excuse that funding comes from the BRA with CDBG funds. The employer of record will become the um, mass housing, um, Southeastern Mass Housing Corporation, the nonprofit subsidiary of the Brockton Housing Authority. They are a qualifying entity to contract with the BRA to provide us with the Main Street Manager. 
but with a significant difference. SMAC will only be the employer of record for things like providing the payroll, paychecks, office space, phone, etc. However, the contract will now specify that the Main Street manager will report to and be supervised by the city's director of planning and economic development, Rob May. So in essence, the Main Street manager will continue, I think with a somewhat refocused mission, but now reporting directly to the city's director of planning and economic development. And again, that particular position is not funded with city funds, but I just want you to see that in terms of the overall proposed changes to B21. I will also add conditions to this year's contract with B21, and these will have to be approved by their board, but our funding will be conditional on their board's acceptance of these conditions. And the first one is that the maintenance of Campanelli Stadium will be overseen by the city superintendent of buildings. Not necessarily is he doing the work or paying for the work, but it gives us our own uh, superintendent of buildings having direct oversight on what maintenance is done and how much is spent for it and ensuring that the money is spent is being spent properly and that the work that's being completed is being completed properly. We will also add language that will bring the B21 executive director position uh, under the supervision of the city's director of planning and economic development. So while that position will be continued to fund to be funded this year uh, through our reduced allocation to B21, the work duties being completed by that executive director will now come under the supervision of the city's director of economic planning and economic development. I think that those are some pretty significant moves in a short period of time to address concerns that have been raised by this council in terms of how the money that we're spending is being overseen and what really is the best model for the future going forward. And I believe that this will be a transition year so that when we're having this conversation with next year's budget, we will have a plan in place to bring that stadium back under permanent city control and to bring that economic development position back in-house and no longer fund those things through the Brockton 21st Century Court. And I'll answer your questions on that as we go through the mayor's budget. That's contained in the mayor's budget. We're also uh, utilizing an overlay surplus this year. And over the course, as you saw in your materials, of reviewing several past tax years, the city assessor has declared an overlay surplus of in the neighborhood of $2.5 million. That money in this budget is being appropriated to a number of critical one-time needs. You don't use a one-year chunk of money that's not going to be there again next year to create positions that will still have to be paid for next year. What we've done with this block of money that's become available is to identify critical one-time needs that need to be funded in this budget and apply those funds to those needs. As an example, $825,000 going towards retiring another chunk of last year's snow removal deficit, nearly a million dollars in capital outlays, roofs on fire stations, police cruisers, IT, repairs to the city hall elevator, DPW snow removal equipment. Those are all critical needs that cannot go on any longer. These department heads have been asking for help for several years now, and we're at the point that some of these things just have to be addressed, and by utilizing this funding from the overlay, it's going to allow us to address all of these capital needs and deficit reduction, paying cash rather than borrowing. And there's a breakage excess of about $100,000 when you pay all those other things off from the overlay, and that joins the $2.2 million going into stabilization. It's a little more going into the stabilization. It seems like a pretty ambitious budget, and it is under the constraints that we have operating city government nowadays, and between uh, facing the ongoing underfunding of local government by the state. 
And our local aid from the state a few years ago was cut by about $8.5 million. That money has never been restored. And each year we have a structural deficit of in the neighborhood of $10 million in the city budget. The cost of running the city goes up 12 or 13 million a year. S state local aid goes up two or three. And it face, it, we're faced each year with this structural deficit. This year, for the second consecutive year, there is very good news around new growth. New growth in our tax base, both residential and commercial. And this year, the assessor is estimating a $1.7 million increase in new growth over last year. Combined with last year's new growth, it totals over $4 million in new growth. It's the largest two-year period of new growth in the city's history. That new growth is not appreciation in current market values. New growth is real new values. New growth is building of new homes, additions to existing homes, businesses purchasing real estate, commercial property, businesses investing in commercial, personal property. And we're up across the board. And I think that it's clear that the long-term answer to Brockton's ability to provide essential city services and meeting the educational needs of our children is dependent upon the growth of the tax base. We will never do it just going back to the same people and asking them for more and more each year. All that does is drive business out of the city rather than into the city. And I do believe that this record new growth over the last two years is an indicator that many of the economic development initiatives that we have initiated over the last two and a half years are bringing results. It's record new growth. So, counselors, uh, in, in summary, the FY17 budget increases our spending on schools. Brockton kids really do count. I'll steal the superintendent's line. We're adding public safety personnel. We're settling union contracts. We're adding to our reserves. We're investing in capital needs. And we're doing all of this while for the third consecutive year not utilizing the full 2.5% tax levy. And as I may have mentioned earlier, over three years now in this administration, not utilizing that full levy has kept $8 million in the pockets of our residents and taxpayers that were available to be taken in tax increases by the city. And on that, I'll conclude my remarks on the overall budget. And uh, Mr. President, be Thank happy you. to-